So if you are joining us online this morning, welcome to Peoples. I hope that you're an active participant in today's service. You can find the uh, readings, prayers, and music for today's service on our website, peoplespresbyterian.org, under today's date on the worship tab, or if you're um, watching online, you can also find them on screen. Um, so if you happen to have a candle handy, I invite you to light it now as I light mine. You are a part of the body of Christ, no matter who you are. You are present in the house of God, no matter where you are. The light of God is lighting your path, no matter how you are worshiping with us this morning. Please join with me in our opening prayer. The word of the Lord revives the soul, and those who follow it are wise. The word of the Lord rejoices the heart and guides our paths through life. The word of the Lord endures forever. God's word is true and righteous. The word of the Lord is more desirable than gold. God's word is sweeter than honey. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Jesus said, whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. Let us humble ourselves before God and confess our sins as individuals and as a community. Please join me in the prayer of confession. Holy God, we commit ourselves to service but fail to have a servant's heart. We seek social status, not sacrifice. We welcome worldly success, not the humble path of Christ. Forgive us, we pray. Free us from the pressures of the world that keep us jockeying for position. Help us be servants of all. Amen. The mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting. I declare to you, in the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. With a reverent sense of your presence and your Spirit's gift of guidance, we gratefully approach your word today, Holy God. Help us meditate on the message you intend for us and be open to your life-giving truth. Amen. The first scripture reading is from Isaiah chapter 35, verses 4 to 7. Say to those who are of a fearful heart, Be strong, do not fear. Here is your God. The Lord will come with vengeance, with terrible recompense. The Lord will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then the lame shall leap like a deer, and the tongue of the speechless sing for joy. For water shall break forth in the wilderness, and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool, and the thirsty ground springs of water. The haunt of jackals shall become a swamp. The grass shall become reeds and rushes. Our gospel reading this morning comes to us from Mark chapter 9, verses 38 through 47. Hear now the word of the Lord. John said to Jesus, Teacher, we saw someone casting out demons in your name, and we tried to stop him because he was not following us. But Jesus said, Do not stop him, for no one who does a deed of power in my name will be able soon afterwards to speak evil of me. Whoever is not against us is for us. For truly, I tell you, whoever gives you a cup of water to drink because you bear the name of Christ will by no means lose the reward. 
If any of you put a stumbling block before one of these little ones who believe in me, it would be better for you if a great millstone was hung around your neck and you were thrown into the sea. If your hand causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life maimed than to have two hands and to go to hell, to the unquenchable fire. And if your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life lame than to have two feet and to be thrown into hell. And if your eye causes you to stumble, tear it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and to be thrown into hell. This is the word of the Lord. Last week's reading in which Jesus tells his followers to welcome children is the beginning of the conversation between Jesus and his friends that we continue today. In the closing lines of that reading, Jesus took a little child and put it among them, and taking it in his arms, he said to them, Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. I think it's interesting that no one responds to this, as though they're not entirely sure what to do with Jesus' words or the child he's still holding in his arms. That scene is a popular one in art, but illustrations often depict an idyllic scene in which a group group of cute and smiling and well-dressed children skip towards Jesus for a hug. It views the gospel story through a very modern lens because our concept of childhood is a pretty recent development. We're not talking about a well-behaved Sunday school class of fourth graders. We're talking about snotty, sticky, screaming toddlers who are too young to be working as apprentices and who may not live long enough to bring in income for their family. They are the ones that you kind of feel like maybe you should include, but honestly, you kind of don't want to. Like, Grown-ups are talking, you know? And it's really distracting to have tiny humans underfoot asking endless questions. It would be nicer if the group was all on the same page and able to take part in the same conversation. But Jesus says, no, this isn't about you, and it isn't about being comfortable. What we're doing is sharing the radical love of God with the world. The radical love of God that embraces all people, no exceptions. The love of God finds a way to include people we struggle to communicate with, like the deaf man in the gospel story we read two weeks ago. The love of God finds a way to include snotty, sticky, screaming children, like in last week's gospel story. The love of God finds a way to include people who, on the surface, don't seem to fit in at all, like Ned the Knitting Pirate. The love of God finds a way to include people who believe in God, but live in a different kind of community, like in today's gospel reading. But God's love applies to everyone, no matter how many different ways we wonder, but does that include, the answer is always yes. God loves everyone. In today's reading, Jesus warns us not to put a stumbling block between one of these little ones who believe. He's talking about those who are physically small, like the child who he is still holding in his arms but he's also talking about those who are new to the faith, or new to the community, or new to following Jesus. It's an important warning, and one that we should always keep at the front of our minds. Imagine that a young person who was raised without religion attends church for the first time. They show up at a new place, maybe only knowing one person, and they're not entirely clear on what is going to happen or what might be expected of them. 
maybe I'm projecting as an introvert, but I think that's an incredibly brave thing to do and an enormous act of faith in and of itself. But imagine that on this occasion, someone says to them, well, I would never allow my child to wear something like that. Or, what do you mean you don't know this Bible story? Everyone knows this Bible story. Or, I wouldn't expect you to understand. Or, uh, young people today don't believe in anything. Can you imagine how uncomfortable and patronizing and demeaning that would feel? Why would this young person ever come to church again? A stumbling block was put in their way and they couldn't get around it. Today happens to be International Talk Like a Pirate Day, and it delights me to no end that our gospel reading talks about cutting off feet and hands and plucking out eyes because it brings to mind an image of a grizzly pirate with a peg leg and a hook on his arm and an eye patch. Is that at all what Jesus was talking about? No, but I'm enjoying the image. All pirate jokes aside, it's a rather alarming statement for Jesus to make, to put it mildly. Jesus says that if your hand or your foot causes you to sin, cut them off. And if your eye causes you to sin, tear it out. I'm pretty confident that he wasn't talking about literal amputation. But I'm afraid that what he did mean taking real responsibility for your actions and choices, and making real efforts to change your ways, I'm not convinced that it's much easier than literal amputation. Jesus isn't saying, if your hand causes you to sin, just replace it with a hook and you're golden. Jesus is saying, you will be my hands and feet and voice when I am gone. Welcome everyone the way that I welcome everyone. Jesus isn't saying, if your foot causes you to sin, it's better to hack it off and die a slow death by infection rather than risk introspection. Jesus is saying, you are in control of the way you treat people. Is there a common thread connecting your bad choices? Is there a way that you could remove or reduce them from your life? Jesus isn't saying, if your eye causes you to sin, make a big stink about decency and dress codes and how women should be more modest. Jesus is saying, you know perfectly well that you are the only one to blame for your own thoughts. How can you be more proactive in respecting others, in your head and in your actions? I feel like I say this a lot, but I don't care what you believe as much as I care about what you do because you believe. The disciples believed, and we believe too, that Jesus was worth listening to and following that he was a man of great power with a connection to God that neither they nor we always understand. Because the disciples believed in Jesus, they followed him and learned from him and traveled the world to teach others about him after his death, even though it was dangerous for them. What do we do because we believe in Jesus? We believe that God loves the world. Because Jesus knew that God loves the world, he shared that love with everyone who came to him, no matter how much it confused his friends, no matter how far on the margins of the community they were, no matter how much value they had in the eyes of their society. What do we do because we believe that God loves the world? How far do we go to make people feel welcome and included? How hard do we work to keep stumbling blocks out of the paths of new believers? 
How willing are we to cut things from our lives when we realize that they are hurting people? Please pray with me. When we pray together, we multiply our joys and divide our sorrows. Persistent and present God, deliver us from doubts that keep us from turning to you more often in prayer. Deliver us from catastrophizing thoughts, from assuming the worst, from failing to recognize the power you have given us to help and heal. Deliver us from the shame of past failures that keep us from risking vulnerability. Deliver us from cynicism that keeps us from embracing each day as a new opportunity, a precious gift, another chance to do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with you. God of peace, be with those who are fleeing violence, tyranny, and war. Accompany those seeking safety and shelter. Rescue the asylum seekers and the unaccompanied children. By the gift of your Holy Spirit, embolden us to cross borders of our own making, overcoming bias, seeking justice offering welcome. Creator God, in the midst of hurricanes, floods, and devastating wildfires, empower us to care for our earth and for one another. Give comfort and courage to those who are suffering. Guide world leaders towards smart and sustainable action that will care for your creation and not cause further harm. Quench our warming globe's thirst for justice.
finally, God, we pray for the sick in need of healing. Friends, neighbors, and loved ones suffering from COVID-19 or other diseases or injuries. Sit with those waiting for a diagnosis. Comfort those living with pain. Sustain those filled with worry. Restore those living without hope. Almighty God, we praise you for your grace that has sustained us, your discipline that has corrected us, your patience that has borne with us, and your love that has redeemed us. United as a family of faith and as the body of Christ, we lift these prayers up to you. Hear us now as we pray the prayer Christ taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. With glad and generous hearts, let us return to God a portion of all that we have been given. Let us present our tithes and offering to our God. Let us pray. 
Holy God, we gratefully present these gifts and entrust them to the power of Christ's ministry. May these gifts bear the good news of the gospel, the least and the last. May these gifts be signs of our welcome to the most vulnerable among us. Bless our offerings so that they may provide healing and hope. Amen. <clears throat> Please join with me in reading our affirmation of faith this morning from a brief statement of faith. We trust in Jesus Christ, fully human, fully God. Jesus proclaimed the reign of God, preaching good news to the poor and release to the captives, teaching by word and deed and blessing the children, healing the sick and binding up the brokenhearted eating with outcasts, forgiving sinners, and calling all to repent and believe the gospel. Unjustly condemned for blasphemy and sedition, Jesus was crucified, suffering the depths of human pain and giving his life for the sins of the world. God raised this Jesus from the dead, vindicating his sinless life breaking the power of sin and evil, delivering us from death to life eternal.
we sit this morning and as we go out into the week, I invite you to think about what you believe about God's love and what you do because you believe in it. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May God's countenance be lifted upon you and give you peace. Sail the seas and share the love of God by welcoming children and strangers and wanderers and guests, by being really welcoming and not just polite, but interested in people for who they are by welcoming in your crew pirates with peg legs and hooks and eye patches and knitting needles, by sharing hats and blankets to keep others warm and cozy. From wherever you are, serve the Lord, Creator, Son, and Holy Spirit.